There's a lot of things that catch your attention this year. Um, as you know, I'm passionate about the use of alentuzumab and aggressive patients. Uh, so this conference, we get a readout on six-year follow-up data from the phase three programs. So that is to say, people that went into the registration phase three trials, we're now following them out a full six years. We're also getting a readout on the phase two programs up to 10 years. And so uh, as you start to use a drug longitudinally, you start to get an increasing sense of its safety, its efficacy, its durability. And so that data is really, really uh, striking to me. There's a couple things that are coming out. Um, the, the, the first thing, I guess, is that when you go out six years, the majority of patients are never being retreated after that second dose. Remembering that we give a dose, and then a year later we give again, and then we don't redose them unless they need it. What we're finding is that six years, most people don't need it. And despite the fact that the majority of patients are never retreated, at six years, we see this really durable effect. So we see high levels of efficacy as it relates to very low relapse rate, and I'm talking like annualized relapse rates like 0.12, like insanely low. NETA, a very, very popular term that has now become adopted uh, in most of the lexicon of MS, this no evidence of disease activity. Over 50% of people six years out are, are manifesting this. You look at brain atrophy, which is increasingly becoming uh, more important as we understand MS pathophysiology. The brain atrophy rates are normalizing in years three, four-ish. They're staying low. They're staying, you know, 0.2 or less in year six. So this is the kind of uh, information coupled with the safety profile that just makes me very, very excited about this drug. I think that there's consistent news. I don't really find it to be bad, if you will. What I like as it relates to safety, if you will, is that the profile is not changed. We, we know that there's a risk of thyroid autoimmunity. We know that risk peaks in year three and then drops. And when you go out to year six, it hasn't changed. We know there's a very low risk of ITP, immune thrombocytopenia, 2%, and it doesn't increase as we move forward in time. Uh, this is very, very reassuring to me. Uh, it's important to know in the post-marketing setting, do you see a signal downstream? And I think the answer from a safety standpoint is, you got what you got, and it doesn't change. Let me answer the question by thinking about the traditional way of treating MS. So traditionally, you're injecting yourself once, twice, thrice weekly, maybe a little bit less than some, with some of the newer injections, or you're taking a pill once a day or twice a day. And as long as you stay on those therapies, then you can talk about the effects. In all of those drugs, if you stopped them, it'd be bad news bears. And so we're talking about unleashing uh, active disease in a matter of months in any of those cases. Here, I can go six years or 10 years, depending on which data set I want to look at, and I'm seeing a durable effect without being treated. And I think categorically that's different. Do I know what happens 15 years down the line? I don't. Um, am I looking forward to the ride? I am. If you dose someone with alemtuzumab, a year later you give it to them again. After that point in time, it's, it's going to be a decision uh, with the doctor and the patient, do we need to retreat? And when you look at the, at the clinical trials going out six years, less than 5% of patients ever switched drug. It's an option. It's something that you can discuss, uh, although um, it's not being used very much. And I think that speaks to uh, the efficacy and the durability of the therapy. The, the way the clinical trials were designed uh, was for, uh, there was two, you know, two uh, sister trials. Uh, we, we applied the drug in the Karamis-1 population in, in people that were uh, treatment naive. They had never been dosed before. And uh, it was a highly successful uh, program and that durability is seen in the data that we see at this conference. Uh, there are places around the world, uh, I consider them to be rather enlightened countries, where you can apply the therapy. For example, in Great Britain, you can apply the therapy early on, first line. Um, Canada, you can apply it second line. Uh, in the United States, our regulators and the FDA interpreted the data a bit differently, unfortunately. And so it's relegated uh, with what we call a double step edit. In other words, they're recommending that you go through two drugs. And, and as such, uh, we're seeing the drug applied a bit later in the algorithm. Um, someone who has been on a therapy and had breakthrough disease or intolerable side effects, and then yet another one. If there's a patient who has active relapsing disease, and I need to shut it down, if there's a patient that has goals of, I don't want to have anything happen to me, I would, I would like to uh, achieve NETA, um, that's a patient in whom I think that we need to discuss the drug. 
There's been a lot of surprises. Um, as, as you recall, uh, we thought that we would see uh, Alemtuzumab FDA approved a year earlier than it was. Um, it was a shock when uh, the subgroup uh, <coughs> at the FDA said yes, and then when they voted, they said no. And there was an outrage. Many of us wrote um, rather inflammatory letters uh, demanding that it be reevaluated, and we were delighted that it was. I think if I predict the future, what you're going to see is we're going to revisit the label. We're going to revisit how we apply the drug. Um, and that's works to happen. I mean, you're going to have to have the drug out in the market for three, four, five years before you're able to revisit. And so we're in this period where we're all still learning. I think there's a very, very important point, uh, and you can't stress it enough. Uh, and that's that the use of alemtuzumab uh, is, is a different model for approaching multiple sclerosis. So as opposed to creating a blockade so that naughty cells can't cross from the bloodstream into the brain, or as opposed to retraining a cell to knock it off, alemtuzumab is a induction therapy. Uh, it's really a two-step process. You give someone the therapy and you deplete a, adult mature lymphocytes. It's not scorched earth where you're just like setting fire to everything, but it's rather focused. And then there's a repopulation. And so as the cells regrow, they grow back differently. And we have excellent uh, basic science data to suggest that the regulatory cells, the COPs, they come back stronger and bigger and more vigorous. And I think that this one-two punch, knocking down the naughty adult lymphocytes and, and forcing them to grow back much more pleasant, is why we see this durable effect. And the reason I bring this up to you is it's the only drug in our armamentarium that works like that. It's induction therapy in its, proper, in its proper sense. And we have to think about its application very differently.